Ugh, another video that shows you how to edit photos in Lightroom on YouTube. Not like that exists, right? Well, today I actually want to do something a bit differently and take three pictures and edit them in kind of a short amount of time. And the common theme of all of these pictures is that they're kind of like, eh, you know, they're not that great, to be honest. But I do think they have potential, so I just want to make them look as cool as possible in a short amount of time and in one video. Now, this first picture is from Hong Kong, and what I'm going to do is just raise up the shadows, bring out all of this detail. Bring it on the highlights to retrieve all of this highlight detail in here on the lights. And I love bringing up the white slider just to give a bit more liveliness to the picture. And as you can see, I, I shot this way too dark. I should have brought up the exposure in camera, but luckily I can do it in editing as well. And also, can you see this like weird color from the street lamps? I'm just going to try to counteract that by bringing the color temperature more into the blues and also adding some magenta for the most part. That actually looks pretty good. Now, the city pictures actually really like to bring up the clarity just to bring out everything. 25 will be all right here. Let's go down into the split toning, add some highlight magenta or I guess just warm tones to be honest, a more clean warm tone and go into the shadows and add some blue tones, you know, bringing it up quite a bit actually to 30. And that looks already a lot better than before. Why not also straighten everything on auto and add just a tiny bit of vignetting on the corners so it looks a little bit more atmospherical and cool. Let's go into the radio folders here and see if we can add some dodge and burning. So. I'm going to definitely try with plus exposure, a little bit of warmth, whites and contrast and just like drop one over here and duplicate it, drop one over there. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Just two filters are enough in terms of plus exposure. Now I'm just going to go into the opposite, go a little bit into the minus exposure with some parts like this part in the bottom right. Doesn't really need to be that bright. And speaking of that, Part, you know, let's just crop it out. Doesn't look that great. All right, let's bring up uh, another graduated filter, rather the first graduated filter, add plus exposure over the sky, add a bit of minus clarity just to bring some like mysterious cool vibes in there as if the distance was more hazy. And then the bottom, uh, I'm just gonna add another graduated filter with minus exposure and a bit plus clarity. So you have this nice graduation from kind of dark to bright in the background and also the background being a little bit dreamy and then the foreground being very crisp and clear. And there's quite a bit of noise, so let's bring up the noise reduction a little bit and definitely bring up the color noise reduction, which will reduce all of the purple and green sensor noise. And let's just compare this real quick from before to after. Man, that's a world of difference in just like three minutes. Let's go on to the next one. And oh, this is St. Paul's Cathedral in London. I remember taking that photo. What I want to try here, let's just make it straight first of all. I'm just kind of trying to visualize what I want to do, trying out different color temperatures for now. Yeah, okay, I, I think I have an idea. So I want to go into the warm tones, bring up a lot of the shadows, bring down the highlights by a lot as well, bring up the whites. Um, contrast, I'm not too big of a fan of contrast. It really tends to lose a lot of the shadow details. But here again, because architecture, I'm going to bring out a little bit of the clarity to make everything just more crisp, I guess. Bring up the vibrance and ooh, look at how well vibrance works here. That is beautiful. Okay, then oh, tonal curve. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I think I want to go into the minus highlights a bit and then also into minus darks because I still want to have some shadows in there. I just don't just want to make everything super bright and boring and split toning, I'm going to do my usual thing, which is going to the warm tones and then going to the shadow tones and add a bit of blue. I still want some blue in this picture, although what I think I'm going to do here is kind of a selective color, but not in a bad, boring way, but instead just boost the red tones, orange, yellows, and then take down a lot of the aqua, blue, purple, magenta colors like that. Does it work? Kind of. Maybe too much red tones. Maybe I really have to get rid of all of these magenta and blue tones. But let's actually leave the oranges at zero and just bring up the yellows. Interesting look. I don't know if that's really the best hue for the greens. Yeah, you can see these windows are just a bit weird. So I want to change the hue here. 
and maybe go into the yellows as well, bring it more towards the orange tones. And now the problem that I have is that it looks kind of like a bit too faded out. So I'm going to go into the total curve, add medium contrast here and use my trick with the graduated filters and bring in one over the top, making a bit brighter, bring down the whites so they're not clipped in the sky and uh, making the clarity a bit less and then adding another one, the bottom, making clarity um, more while bringing down the exposure, just like that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then go into the rail filters, add some plus filters here with plus white, plus exposure, plus color temperature and just, oh, that's way too much color temperature and just kind of drag them over some things that could be more interesting, more like, complex in terms of the lighting. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good actually. Ooh, I think that looks pretty interesting. Okay, okay. Oh, I just noticed I cut something off here. Did I do this on purpose? Oh, it's because of that. Okay, so let's change that to level. Before, after, um, we lost a lot of this blue tone, like on purpose. I'm not sure, maybe I should bring back some blue tones from just a blue slider, maybe just the aqua slider. It's kind of a selective color uh, or rather orange teal look where a lot of oranges are in there and not a lot of blues. You can certainly experiment with that, but I think that's pretty decent for a short edit. Maybe a bit more vignetting or actually some vignetting at all to make, again, the corners a bit darker. I think vignetting works really great for night pictures. And going to the last picture that I've prepared here, um, a long exposure of traffic. So what I'm gonna do here as well is just auto, just correct all of the distortion stuff. And I think in this one, I'm gonna go a little bit differently than the previous two. I'm still gonna bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, but instead of bringing up the whites, which would, yeah, it really blows everything. I'm actually going to bring down the white and instead bring up the overall exposure just a little bit. Go into the minus with the color just to make everything more blue. Clarity. Okay, I'm definitely going to add clarity here as well. In terms of color, I don't know if I can really add too much vibrance, but I'm certainly going to try. Also bring down the highlights overall, bring up the darks a little bit and very heavily, I already know it. Go into the split toning, add some blues, maybe even into the purple tones oh that makes it very interesting indeed and then with the highlights i could go into the usual warm tones however not the yellowish more orangey tones but rather the very red ones um let's zoom in to see if there's some noise okay not too bad not too bad um but i'm still gonna bring up the color noise now color noise is a great thing because it doesn't actually have a bad effect to your picture but it just really moves all of the purple and green sensor noise all of the like weird stuff that you might otherwise just clog up your picture especially in the shadows and uh vignetting not gonna do anything here instead i want to do in something with the primary colors and go into the calibration here you can really mess with the colors on a fundamental level so just i suggest you try it out it's very very different from picture to picture and certainly depends on your taste red primary color a little bit to the right this is certainly going to be a very artistic picture but i kind of like it okay okay let's finish up this one with some rail filters and I'm gonna add one over the left not even the bottom just kind of the left here add some negative exposure a bit more bluish it really works a lot of times to add some blues with the shadows because that's a kind of natural state of light and then add another graduated filter over the right side with a tiny bit of plus exposure and some plus whites and some more warm tones, perhaps a little bit less magenta here. Okay, okay. I think that's actually pretty interesting. I just wanna go into the tonal curve real quick and bring down the shadows here. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna do to this picture, I think. Um, perhaps I could even go into the saturation of the blues and bring that up a little bit. And I'm just gonna say that I'm done here. So from left to right, uh, Oh, I think I really should actually add like just two or three rail filters with plus exposure, especially over these waiting hours and tuk-tuks and everything. And then adding one over this bridge, just like that, a little bit smaller. That certainly helps a little bit with the uh, darkness down here. Yeah, let's just call it quits here. So these were three pictures edited in just 
I think about 10 minutes. I could um, certainly do a lot more like detail stuff uh, if I have more time. What I wanted to show you here is that you shouldn't necessarily just discount a bad looking picture, especially if a raw file that is good technical quality and that has potential, then you can still edit that into a pretty cool picture at the end in not that much time at all. But in case you don't want to actually edit a picture from start to finish all the time, I do happen to have Lightroom presets. How convenient for you. Definitely didn't mean to plug this at the end of the video. Uh, but these are my 25 Lightroom presets that I've created over the years to help with my editing. And the thing that's kind of unique about them is they're not just created to make a certain look to your picture. I've really made them so you can take a wide variety of raw files, whether it be city, landscape, nature, uh, picture, dark, you know, bright, daytime, nighttime, and just apply a preset and get a look for it. And, you know, just pretty much have your picture edited in one click and make it look really cool. So uh, I use it a lot, especially if I don't have time to edit every single picture from scratch. Just in case you're curious, you can check out the website. There are more examples on there and more info about it. And uh, also I offer full refunds. So if you buy them and you don't like them, you can just tell me and I'll refund you.